from the beautiful Treasure Coast of Florida. You're watching Am Radio Concepts. Hey guys, Eric with Ham Radio Concepts, KJ4YZI just unpacked the MFJ1786 magnetic loop antenna, 30 through 10 meters, and uh, continuous coverage. And this is uh, a choice for a lot of amateurs that are space restricted for antennas or cannot have an antenna outside for an HOA. It can be mounted in the attic, vertically or polarized, I'm sorry, vertically or horizontally, however you choose to mount it, under a balcony at a condo, uh, on the balcony, just on a temporary mount or whatever, it has the mounting hardware, has the uh, remote control head that powers over the coax feeding this the motor that's connected to the variable capacitor in the top of this. That's how it uh, has a different tuning range. Uh, the motor using uh, moving that variable capacitor inside. Uh, not too heavy, maybe maybe 10 pounds with this aluminum uh, construction on the tubing, so it's got a. a, a a nice size radiator on this thing. It's not a not a little radiator at all. A lot better than having a little flat wire uh, for a space restricting antenna. So let's uh, check out in the video here. I'll show you how to get the remote tuning head uh, uh, operational and uh, how to hook up the mounting hardware here. And we'll make some contacts on it and see what happens. Now, um, very important. You do not want to use a power supply that has a ground on it. This remote head comes with in the, the box here comes with a 12 volt uh, wall wart that specifically does not use a ground because you, you with the coax uh, powering with the power over the coax and the magnetic loop antenna you cannot have a uh, grounded power supply you'll short the unit out so you use only the power supply that comes with it or you can use a battery great for uh, traveling vacationing you can set it up at a campsite very easily run this thing on battery power with your battery powered rig and make some contacts without having to set up some gigantic antenna so um, there's a couple dr uh, drain holes in the bottom by the so239 around that and like in the sides here on the bottom as well you don't want to seal that up because you want to let the condensation be able to vent from the unit uh, to prevent moisture buildup so let's go ahead and uh, put it together and see what happens all right, real quick, a uh, little vague in the manual installing this, and uh, so I'll just give you a brief idea. This can be, again, mounted horizontally or vertically. If you were to mount it horizontally like this, you'd use this plate. You take the four screws out of the bottom here, and you can hear my parrot in the background. She's helping out with the video. Uh, the four bolts that you take out of here, you'll put the plate on and screw those four screws back in. And then you'll use the uh, U-bolt here with one of the uh, plates here to grab onto the mast and that would pretty much go into here like this and you'd use this plate on the back with the nuts and lock washers that come with it. Now you can use an inch to an inch and a half mast in here, uh, mount it horizontally and this will be bolted down here. Now if you want to mount it vertically, no problem. The four bolts you took out of here, you'll use these plates. There's two of them. There's uh, one there and I have one here. Okay, and it comes with these longer two and a half inch bolts. So basically, you'll put the flat plate down, you put this one here, this has got the teeth on it, so this is where the mast goes in, all right? You put the other one here, and then you run the, the bolts in like this. So when you get both of them in there, you'll slide the mast in this way, and now it's mounted vertically. So that might help you a little bit, uh, being that the manual doesn't exactly describe that. Uh, just gives you a picture, but that's how you'd mount it vertically standing up or horizontally with the mask going this way. All right, here it is mounted outside vertically. I have it mounted on probably the chintziest looking mount you've ever seen, uh, just for testing purposes. But I wanted to see what this thing will do at ground level because if I mount it up at 40 feet on top of the tower, uh, I'll have a little advantage there. So if this thing makes some contacts uh, on a little three foot mast out in the yard uh, facing due south, uh, that'll be the actual test to see what I hear and what I can transmit uh, with it being this low. So I'm feeding it with just regular RG58 coax, uh, the best RG58 that I could find in my shack. But you want to have low loss coax here just because with this compromised antenna, any little bit of loss will not help you. Uh, you don't want to have, if you could eliminate a couple of dB of loss in the coax and get that to the antenna, that'd be better. Uh, so I'll try this uh, horizontally here. 
and uh, let's go inside and make some contacts and see what happens. All right, so after reading your manual uh, before you get started with testing procedures, uh, let me give you an idea how this works. So this box here, uh, this unit or antenna comes with uh, its own 12 volt wall warp power adapter. So the one down here is just because it's sitting on top of their powering my radio. Uh, this here sends current down the coax to that antenna for the motor that's connected to the variable capacitor. It's where the tuning range happens from 10 to 30 megahertz is that motor moving that variable capacitor. Now, the way this works is you transmit a low, most like um, a five watt carrier, uh, unmodulated carrier like a CW tone into it, okay? And when you transmit into it, uh, you you will use these which drive the motor to find the best uh, resonance. Once it gets resonant, it'll beep and then you can fine tune it with these two. So I'll show you how this works. You'll see when I transmit into it, my SWR is really high. First thing you wanna do is run this up, push the up button in, let the motor run that capacitor all the way up to the top of the tuning range. It'll shut off when it hits the top. Take the button out, transmit into it, and hit down. Now, uh, it's going, it's running that motor down right now, and when it hits a sweet spot, and uh, I'm on 15 meters, when it hits the sweet spot, you'll see the meters right there change, and now it's squealing, okay? So, you take the button out, and it tells you here, up or down, so that you would transmit again and use the fine tune buttons this indicates to go up. So I'll transmit and use the fine tune button until I get a sweet spot right there. All right. Now it is a little tricky to learn this because there's a sharp tuning curve. That's flat right there. That reflected power is not moving. Uh, but it's such a narrow tuning curve that if you pass it, and you start going back up in SWR, you gotta go the opposite way until you find the null in that SWR. If I had if I had a way to hook an antenna analyzer up to this right at this second, I could show you what it, but basically you know what it means. If right now I'm flat on 20, 21.275, okay? And if I want to now tune on 17 meters, I'll go down to 17 here, you'll see my SWR is high again, all right? We'll go down some more, and it'll find the spot, it beeps, take the button out, it says go up. Now you see the LED blinking because it's only barely moving that motor in there because it's fine tuning. So it's like pulsing the motor just to get it to move enough where you can fine tune it. Right there. See that? flat, okay? Reflected power is not moving. Now, uh, if you want to go to 20 meters, well, I'll go down to 20, all right? And SWR is high again, so we hit, we key it and hit down. It's gonna go down farther until it hits 20. Okay, take the button out, it says go up. So you have to transmit when you do this to see what the SWR is. Oh, see, I went the other way. Now you go back down. So I find that little sweet spot. And the best I can get on 20 is about, about 1.2 to 1, all right, which is very acceptable. Now, if I want to go back up to, say, uh, 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 12 meters, then I'll go up to 12 and hit up. Now it's running the capacitor back up towards uh, the top of the tuning range. Now you'll watch, I think on 12, this doesn't exactly find the null. I think it skips right by it. Yep. Okay, so now uh, it won't, it didn't stop me on 12 until I let go of the button, okay? And it's telling me I need to go down. So we'll try to fine tune 12 and see what I can get. See the meters start moving. Okay, and I think that's the best I can get on 12 is about a three to one. Now it might change maybe uh, in your situation. It's supposed to be uh, 30 through 10. Maybe 12 is just not a good spot for it. That's the best. My radio right now says 
six, seven, eight, one point eight to one is what my radio says. Um, so that's still acceptable. You can still make a contact with that. All right, um, and make sure when you increase your power that you take the the uh, power meter, uh, the range to the three hundred watt range so that you don't uh, peg out the meter. All right, uh, so let's make a couple contacts. KJ4YZI for a quick one. Hey Al, W0ERE, -E, this is Eric, KJ4YZI, we are down here in Florida. You're 5'9 here, and I'm testing out a, an MFJ magnetic loop antenna. I'm using a 3 foot circle that's about 2 foot off the ground behind my block home. And I'm wondering how I'm making it up there to Missouri, go ahead. Yeah, the call, my call is Kilo Juliet for Yankee Zulu India. Um, yeah, fine business on the on this uh, magnetic loop. I tell you, um, I'm making a YouTube video, and if you don't mind, uh, maybe I'll send you the link to the video because you're my first contact on this antenna. But being that it's only three feet off the ground, it's a 36 inch, 10 inch antenna, and it tunes 30 through 10 meters continuously. Mounted horizontal or vertical, right now I have it mounted vertically. Uh, so I'm, I'm very impressed and I'm recording a little video here, but uh, using 100 watts on an FT450 and um, I, I'm very amazed at this. I'm going to try a couple other bands. Uh, but uh, yeah, you're 5'9", peaking 20 at some times down here in Florida. So 17 meters is, don't, is going good right now and so is this antenna. And I know I heard you say you wanted to get out of there, but I wanted to make contact because you were strong. W0ERE I think it is, KJ4YZI, back to you. Uh, well, there is no counterpoise. This antenna does not require a counterpoise. Um, it is on a really horrible looking mount. This is, I mean, even even my antenna, my radio here, I got the power supply sitting on top of it and then the remote for this antenna. It's all just sitting here because I haven't got time to organize it. But the antenna is outside on just a little round mount on the ground that's weighted with a piece of uh, uh, tubing on it. That's it. I mean, there is nothing special here. There's no counterpoise, there's no power, m minus my 100 watts, there is no uh, elevation. Uh, basically ground mounted, and my house is a concrete block house behind it, so theoretically I'm only, I guess, you know, looking at uh, one side of my property, the other side is blocked by my house, uh, but that's it. Um, so really, uh, with me facing this antenna south, I guess uh, the house being in the way between me and you, uh, I guess it's doing a good job for propagation. Go ahead. Yep, you are my first contact on here. 20 meters on this thing is a little a little deaf, but I'm going to play around with that and see if I can get a 20 on here. Uh, but this band uh, seems to, to wake up on this antenna. Low noise compared to my uh, my off-center fed that I made. Uh, so this antenna has a lot of a less noise and and it can be mounted vertically and horizontally like I said But I'm just doing it vertically. So I guess the it is some sort of directional 
uh, excuse me, directional off the you know broad side of the antenna. Uh, but it's uh, nowhere up where I can rotate it or anything. It's just on the ground. So, uh, but there you have it, Al. Uh, and thanks for coming back to me. And, and if you're interested, I'll send you a, a link to the video. You can hear yourself on the other end on my YouTube channel for Ham Radio. Uh, w zero Echo Romeo Echo from Kilo Juliet Four Yankee Zulu India. Back to you for a final, and I'll let you get back to it. So, so here's 20. I had my attenuator on by accident. That's why 20 was dead. So I got 20 tuned in. Let's see what happens. KJ4YZI. Hey, good uh, good morning. This is KJ4YZI down in Florida. The name is Eric, and I'm testing a MFJ loop magnetic loop antenna. Right now, I'm using a 36-inch loop antenna mounted two feet above the ground with 100 watts. I'm just wondering how I'm making it up there. You were 5'9 down here in Florida. Go ahead. Uh, I'm on an FT450 running 100 watts into an MFJ magnetic loop antenna for uh, 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 It's a 10 through 30 meter antenna, but I'm, I'm tuned on 20 right now Okay, fine. My name here is Ted. We got three or four people on frequency. Go ahead, Bill All right, there you have it uh, I'm pretty amazed at the contacts that I made on this thing. I made it some more. I didn't put them in a the video for time reasons. I uh, made it long enough as it is, but I hope this uh, video gave you an idea of how this thing works and if you're considering it for your HOA or your uh, uh, camping trips or RVing uh, plans, check out the MFJ1786 and check out some of my other videos on YouTube. Thanks for watching and 7.3. This is KJ4YZI, off and clear.